Okay, it's day eight of logs, and basically by the end of the hour, you're going to be good at graphing these things without a calculator. So, uh, I guess this is just like big picture. Uh, test is not Friday. That's that's a uh, mistake. We, their test is on Monday. So, I'm going to double check that. What does it say here? There is a calc and a non-calc portion, and that's all good, but bottom line is it's not on Friday, it's on Monday. All right, so let's do this warm-up question right here. It's been blue. And give it your best shot. Uh, actually, do try both of these. Make a little XY chart for number two. I don't expect you to be awesome in number two, but I would think you could be good at number one. Give those a shot. You would be expected to do number one. S is 45, so 45 goes here. Then I'm going to get this clump alone. Get the clump alone. All right, so now I'm going to add 176 here. Add 176 here. Uh, kind of try to clean up my writing here. 45 plus 176. Uh, 100, 200, and 21. Is that right? 116 log base 10 of a plus 40. Okay. Then I divide by 116. And 221 divided by 116 is not a nice number. So since it says no calculator, we're just going to leave that alone. Now I'm going to go 10 to that power is equal to that. I'm doing a rewrite. 10 to the power of this crazy 221 over 116. I'm just don't need parentheses around a single number, but I'll do it just to kind of keep you used to that. Equals a plus 40. So then I would subtract 40 from both sides, and I'd have 10 to the power of 221 over 116 uh, minus 40 equals a. There we go. Now I know that's ugly, but that's what you should have had. It's not as pretty as if we'd used the calculator for it. Okay. Any questions on that one? How many of you had the same thing? All right, good. That's the vast majority of the class, so that means I probably didn't make mistakes on that. This is the graphing part, and it, it is it's the like the key to everything is being able to sketch the parent one. Because once you can sketch the parent one, it's really not that hard to like move the whole graph up 10 or, you know, left 3. So how do you get the parent ones? You make an XY chart and you rewrite. The foundation of all log problems, the rewrite to an exponential. So it's 4 to the Y equals X. Do you remember that? How many of you did that when you were doing this problem? Okay, good. Then... The Y's are the what I pick. Normally, like I was working with a kid last night, and he was like putting in numbers like this, uh, just right away for the X's. And that's what we usually do, but that's not what we do on this kind. On this kind, we pick the Y numbers. And what are the three things that always work nice for Y when you're doing exponentials? One, yes. What else? Zero, what else? Negative one, because negative one just is going to take your uh, like four and flip it. So I'm going to put the one right here, and I get four to the one, it's four. I'll put the 0 right here, and I'll get 4 to the 0, and that's 1. And then I put in a negative 1 right there, and I get 4 to the negative 1 is 1 fourth. If I graph them, 4 comma 1 over 4 up 1. 1 comma 0 over 1 up 0. And the last one, 1 fourth comma negative 1. It's really close to that line. Then, final answer is it looks like this. And I hope you'd remember that there's an asymptote line here. Now, it didn't have the little helper thing to say, don't forget to graph the asymptote, but there's an asymptote line there, and they need to be dotted. Okay, so that's a review leading up to today. So that means today's stuff is going to be on the easier side because we've already, we already practiced that yesterday. So what's the difference between log base 2, log base 3, and log base 4? I'll show you really quick. There's log base 2. Here's log base 3. Here's log base 4. 
You get how they all go through that spot? Because if you won the argument, you get zero. So if you put a one in for the argument part, this part right here, you will get zero. All right, so the bigger the base is, it just makes it turn sharper. Think of it as like a right turn for a car. I almost had to do that this morning. We were driving, and uh, four big deer were going across the road, like in the middle of the dark. So uh, sharp, sharp deceleration. Didn't have to actually swerve. Just so you know, um, the if you guys are at that age where soon you're going to be driving, and this is kind of counterintuitive, but do you know if if a deer jumps out in front of you, what you're supposed to do? You hit the brakes but you hit the deer. You're not supposed to swerve. You're to what you want to, because you're like, oh, I don't want to hit Bambi. And what happens when you swerve? You have a good chance you're going to do what? Either roll the car over, in which case you're going to end up on life support and the deer's going to live. Or you do like my, one of my dad's colleagues, Mr. Cheetah. Uh, great name. Um, Mr. Cheetah was uh, driving, and he swerved to miss a deer, and he hit a semi head on. So he's dead. So anyway, the point is, you hit the deer. It's sad, but you're going to uh, do less in the end, far less risk. Here's the other thing. As far as insurance is concerned, if you swerve to miss a deer and you wipe out the car, it's just as bad as if you had drove off the road for something completely, you know, like you just screwed up and hit a tree. You know, they don't, they don't give you any break for the fact there was a deer there because everybody would say they swerved to miss the deer when they have a big dent in the front of their car. You know what I mean? They, they, people would fake that, oh, it was a deer in the road, and that's why I went off the road and hit a tree. So anyway, the insurance companies don't take that as an excuse, so it's considered an at-fault accident if you, hit the if you hit the tree. If you hit a deer, that's called a comp claim, comp comprehensive claim, and those don't count against you. In other words, it's like an act of God. You can't blame the, the driver for the fact that a deer jumped in front of them. So hit the deer also doesn't cause you anything bad on your insurance rates. You swerve off the road and hit tree by accident or roll your car or hit another car, you're all of a sudden liable for a collision which makes your rates go up a lot. It can be like three, four thousand dollars more over the course of the next few years on your insurance rates too. Okay. So I know that's kind of off the topic a little bit, but there's a lot of math behind insurance that uh, you guys are going to come into soon at your age where you're going to be driving. All right, name the transformation. Well, basically, this is just, is it moved left, right, up, down, etc. What's this one? Say it if you know it. Left three. How about this one? Up three. How about this one? Vertical what? Stretch or shrink? Stretch. Vertical stretch. This one, be, do the high vo thing. Horizontal on inside, vertical on outside. There's nothing on the outside here or here. Nothing out there, but there's something on the inside. So that's a what? Horizontal flip, or you could say reflection. The official word is reflection. And in, on your pre-calc tests, if you say flip, you'll get it wrong. If you say reflection, you'll get it right. Okay, so be, get used to the word reflection. Um, it is flipping. That's true. All right, this one's got a whole bunch of things. I'd like you to write them down. There's one, two, three, four, five things happening to this log. There's a vertical of this, and there's a horizontal of that. You should be using a lot of the words horizontal and vertical, but if it's either right or left or up or down, you can just say up, down, left, or right. But for the stretches and the shrinks, make sure you say vertical and reflections. Make sure you say vertical or horizontal. It's one, two, three, four. Yeah, there's five things happening there. Okay, here are some of them. That was a, well, it's vertical on the outside. That's a vo. That's a vertical reflect. This is a vertical shrink factor, a half. Why a shrink? Because it's one half. Anything less than one is a shrink. This is a vertical on the outside. That is a down one. Then the other two things that should have been on your list, 
That's horizontal on the inside. That's a horizontal stretch? No, shrink. Factor of one-third. You can't say factor three, otherwise you're saying it's getting bigger. Factor of one-third. And the last thing is, that's right six. Okay? Yes? Ah, just because something's in parentheses doesn't mean it's on the inside. I know you're thinking that, but this is the parenthesis around the argument. That's the inside on a log. Okay? So thanks for asking about that, because it is a common misconception. This is all in the front of the log, therefore it's on the outside. The only part on the inside of a log is the part in the argument. This part right here is the inside. Okay. So just for extra bonus points, I doubt anybody can do this correctly. If you start on the inside, do you know what order you should do it in? Just to clarify, in pre-calc, this is the topic that you'll learn next year. So what order do you have to do this in? The order does matter. And we usually, I usually at least, encourage everyone to start on the inside, even though technically there's a way to do it on the outside first. But if you start on the inside, if these are numbers, or these are A, B, C, D, and E, what do you think the order should be? A, B, C, D, E is totally wrong. Okay, what order do you think they should go in? Give it a shot. See if your intuitions serve you well. There are math rules you can use for this. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you for that opinion. I'll let everybody give this shot. Write, write it down. A, B. No, I'm not saying it's A, B. I just put them, I lettered them. Okay, so I'm not saying it starts with A, B. Might be B, A. Okay. If you're picking between A and B, tell me something you know that would make you think that one would be before the other one. Multiply comes before, add and subtract. But don't you remember that when you're on the inside, everything is the opposite of what you'd expect? This is not a stretch of three. It's a shrink. Everything's opposite of what you'd expect, and so is the order. So it's B first, and then A. Who had started B, A? Anybody? All right, a few of you. Good job. Then from there, the next ones are on the outside. On the outside, do you do the opposite of what you expect? No, you do it in normal order on the outside. So these guys, which are multiplies, come before this. So you were right about that. Okay, so... Is it E, D, or D, E? Actually, either one. So I'm going to put them like this. D, E, and it could be either one because they are both multiplies. One's a multiply by negative one, one's a multiply by one half. So there's two things there, and that does not matter the order. And then the last thing is C. So it's B, A, D, E, C, or B, A, E, D, C. But C definitely has to be last. Anybody have that right? All right, I told you those are tough, and we get to do those in pre-calc. Nice job. Yes? Um, how would you subtract, like, would you subtract x, or, like, six from x, then, and then multiply with it? How would you do b first? How would you do b first? You just move the thing right six. Oh. Okay. And then you do a shrink factor one-third. And then, after that's done, you keep going to the rest of them. Then you do, of these two, it does not matter which, but I usually recommend it's easier to actually do the stretching before you do the flip. Because the flips are easy. So it's better to get the stretch over with next. So I would recommend the D first before the E, but it doesn't, it's not mathematically important. Yes? The log graph that we're talking about here is going to look generally like that. And this whole thing, this, this whole curve, 
is got to have all these things happen to it. So when it says shift it right six, the whole thing is going to go over six. And then the whole thing is going to get shrunk, and then et cetera, et cetera. We're not going to do anything that hard. You know, just to clarify, this one, we're never going to make you graph something like that hard. Did I answer your question or not? No. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say here. This, this is the graph. It starts like this. That's the parent function. The whole graph now has to move right six. Push. Everything, every point on it. And then every point on it has to be stretched, actually shrunk horizontally, like made narrower. But the... Yes. So this thing, that's log base 4 of x. Before you do anything else, you've got to know what your parent is, log base 4. So that looks like this, y equals log base 4 of x. And we just practiced doing those. You make the little xy chart. Yep, 4 to the y equals x. And then you make a little chart, and it'll look like this blue line. They always do. Okay, it's just a matter of how steep, how tight the turn is. But they always look like that. And then, once you're done graphing that, you do all of these changes to it. All right, so... Steps for transforming them. Basically, uh, this is what I recommend to sketch in the parent function and its asymptotes. So make the parent one, and then do all the transforming, and then sketch the new curve. So basically, you always want to graph the parent function on these. I know I've told you in the past that you could just do the xy chart right off of this, and you could, but man, it'd be really hard because there's so many changes and stuff. So I recommend you always figure out what the parent is and graph that. So let's look at one, for example, this. What's the parent? Before we move it, what's the parent on this? Yes, sir. Log 2 of x, or log base 2 of x. Good. That's the parent. So make that first. Don't try to shift it before you've made the parent. And I would personally just make dots because it's easier to move the dots. It's just at the end you're going to draw a line through all your dots. In other words, if you left your answer like this, even though I know that you probably meant to connect them like that, you have to actually draw the line through them. That's the difference between a discrete graph, which is just dots, and a continuous graph, which is just line through it. All right, so let's talk, what are these points? Uh, I suggested you rewrite first 2 to the y equals x, and then you pick, Maddie, what are the 3 for y? Good. And what did you get when you put them in? Put in 1, you get, put in 0, you get, and put in negative 1, you get, perfect. All right, so 2, 1, 1, 0, and 1 half, negative 1. There. Now, do you have to draw the line through that? No, because it's actually easier to move your points without that line. So I'm just going to undo that line. Now, it's not a bad idea to have your asymptote line in there just so you don't forget to put it in later. Because it's really tempting to, to forget that. Okay, now plus 3. Left 3. 1, 2, 3. Oh, these two move together. That's nice. 1, 2, 3. There. And then don't forget to move the asymptote line over. And the asymptote line has to move over the same exact thing as what the other did, which is 3. So I'm moving it from the y-axis to 3 spots over. There's my dotted line for my asymptote. Okay, and then at the end, as I said, told you before, you should connect your dots. As long as you have three distinct points on it, you'll be fine. I mean, I know it might not hit this spot exactly right there, but... You know, I don't really care as long as your first three points are looking right. And a log graph looks like a tree that's been blown over in the wind. That's what a log is, right? So it's sort of like you had a tree that was straight up and down, and then it got blown over by a force of the wind like that, like that. That's what log graphs look like. And I know that's dumb, but things like that really help you to remember this later. Somebody says, what's the graph of log look like? And you're like, oh, log is... 
Oh yeah, I'm sure it says tree blown over the wind. Oh yeah, that's right, it's going over to the right. That way you won't by accident confuse it with an exponential graph. And the exponentials look like that. They're similar in that they both have asymptotes, but they're different. Okay, moving on. I don't think we need to do a ton of these because I think you get the idea. You graph the parent one, yeah, move it. All right, so uh, I think we should just jump right to the assignment here. And especially because it's a shorter day than normal with the mask day, Let's just get you working on the homework. And I'll look at it with you and see if there's any that we can cut out because it's have my commitment to keeping your assignment size down. All right, to what I think is reasonable. I don't think you need to do that many graphs. Um, I think you can, I, I never want to skip the first one just in case a kid started the assignment and then they get burned by that. So uh, I will skip. Let's see, they have a, these flips are always tough for people. I should leave that one in. This one's so simple. You're just going to move it down to too easy. So get rid of that one. This one's got a flip. Also, the flips are hard for people on these. So let's do, do that one too. So just skip that one. That's part B. Let's see if I can find anything more. And uh, letter F is really, really easy again. It's just move the whole thing up nine. So I think we can skip that one too. So skip bullfrog, BF, today. All right. Now down in here is our review of the uh, application questions. They're the easy kind. They just give you a formula and they give you a number. And you got to figure out where to stick the number into the formula and then solve. So it's just solving equations again, except you got to take one extra step, stick a number in the formula. So that looks like it died 1,250 years ago, so I should look and see. Uh, its age in years is the beginning here, and the C is the carbon. So age is, is the, the front of the formula. So you put the 1,250 in the front, and you solve. So get this clump alone, you'll have. 1250 equals 5700 log base one half of C, and you want to get the C alone. So you got to get the clump alone first. Get that alone first before you rewrite. So then you're going to divide by 5700 on both sides. Then you can do a rewrite. That to that power will equal C, and C will be alone. Now on these kind, you can definitely use a calculator. Just don't use them on the graphs because there's two parts to the test. And the graph part of your test doesn't allow calculators. So, okay, all right, that cuts it down to a reasonable size. Uh, and these other ones should be easy for you. And there's a lot of that on the test, so I don't want to cut any of that out. So, all right, that's all I have for you for today.